your core of strength. But some of us, we don't convey the information when it comes to the right skill or the right strength that supports the job. Maybe it requires a multitasking job. We may say, oh, my strength or confident, uh, hardworking, uh, you know, I don't leave any opportunity, something like that, but that doesn't rank states what is actually needed. So there they go with the question, apart from your interest. What do you think? What do you do? How do you do things? What is your style? Could you just narrate your style of applying your thoughts when you do your job? So this brain states again, what do you do? So that is the reason to conclude it with your strength, how that matches your hobbies. So even listening is a skill. Most of us say, I love listening music, which is very, very essential for a recruiter because listening is something related to your ability or your physical ability. Those who really don't like music would suddenly have a kind of issue on their listening ability, which is a pro and <coughs> fact. So why they love to take people who say listening music is essential is it shows you are 100% okay psychologically that you are good at listening. If not, you don't say listening music is your habit. How you can mirror this, match and mirror this value, this information is true because when we listen music, we do it back when we switch off the player. When we ride a motorcycle, at times we just whisper the song by ourselves. So are we the one who written the lyric? Are we the one we, who uh, tune the music? No way. But we can recap the same when we just imagine or you know, recollecting the thoughts of what we listen, the way that we listen to music. You will find the music and the way it is being sung exactly the way that you could remember. So this is the power of your brain, what people like. So if you could take this, you can do the same when you were riding, when you were driving, when you're walking, when you do some job, when you were cook. At times we whisper the song and we do it. It's a kind of multitasking job. Simple. So that is the reason why they require every single fact has a psychological meaning behind the screen. Why it is so prudent for a person to explain those. Because at times we used to think, why all this? What are they going to do with the hobbies when we say? This is the reason. So apart from the fact that you say, there are more abilities in you that we don't predict it appropriately, or we don't just you know, let those appropriately. That's a recruiter you can do with your abilities. So why this is, you need to show the, you need to develop the structure of the content, what you convey in a, in a, in a right structure, huh? so as you don't confuse, or you can avoid confusing others. So you need to know the meaning of why I say this point in a deep sense, how that affects when I say this to the presentator, in what way that you can impulse the focus in you about the topic that you talk about. So, next what you can do after saying your hobbies, you need to say some of the essential need of the job. Why you like this job? What really matters to you about the job? And what are the personality or the skill that sustaining this job or that matching your profile. We need to connect this together. And we need to say, job comparatively related to it that you'll be doing outside or you'll be doing without knowing what you do. So all these three, and finally, how long is your plan to deal with this job? How long you think that you can stick with it? To show, to ensure, how deep are you, that how true are you that you are interested about this job. So this is how we structure the introduction when we can nice And there are 
different questions that a recruiter used to ask other than asking, tell me about yourself. Somebody say, could you just walk in through your profile? Somebody say, just let me, just brief me about your profile. Just let me, just explain what is not there in your profile. Just let me know yourself, why are you interested about the profile, job profile. All of those are the questions that requires different information about self introduction that we need to understand why the question is, what is need of the recruiter to ask this question, which is very, very necessary for a guy or the candidate who apply for a job. Why this question to me? Or what is actually asked about the information? If I ask you, what do you see? What do you see? Or what do you see before you? What do you see? Me. Then the question should be, who do you see before? Who is before you? That represents me because I'm a human. What is before you that you can use for something other than human? Being. You cannot you cannot just respond that what is you see or something close to it. You can just subject to you. And this is a particular question. What is before you? It's not even asking you what do you see. Just what is before you. T is the answer. If you check alphabets, T U. Right? If you check alphabet, you can find T comes before you. Because the question is, what is before you? There is nothing. The question represents, what do you see before you? What do you think before you, behind you? It's all the question that narrates what is behind you. But this simply states, what is before you? There must be something before you. What's that? If the question is, who is before you? You can say me. Or what do you see before you? Something, table, whatever. So this is how the question get classified. So the next couple of days, what we're going to work on is purely on questioning skills. Because uh, there are trainings, they just do training based on question. They don't just explain it, they keep asking questions. So there are different style of asking questions to get the true information out of what do you know? So henceforth, when you deal with the job, they, you know, analyze, they recognize your ability, not by the work that you do, the capability of asking questions. Because unless you are good about it, unless you have deep idea into it, you can ask the right question right time. So it shows your stability, it shows your understanding, it proves that where you are. So why I say this to you is, this is how we need to ground our representation. <coughs> this can happen as long as we keep doing the job in such a way, it would be easy for us how to respond to somebody when they ask this question. At times people admire the right answer for the question. This is what you asked and what I said is this the answer. You know, at times recruiters used to ask this, to know the listening capability of the candidate. We don't know that. We simply come out saying, if we got a job, we don't know for what we have got the job. If we are not got through, we don't know for what we have got rejected. These are the simple set of information that people look or like people have those, you know, uh, thought of uh, ideas that assimilate in you. How do you you know, uh, you know, how do you formulate your answers to be? So the matter of fact, what we now really want is the structure of whatever we deal with. So as I said, the re uh, reciprocity is nothing but what is the content, what is your job towards doing it. 
Next is the consistency, what, how the alignment should be, right? And the next point is the social fact. Uh, we obviously use some of the social facts such as, we say as Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam says, most of us use the same opinion of something who is popular or who is prominent at this point of time. We say Abdul Kalam, somebody who obviously been repeated on the same point of view. Just don't do that. Some of us, uh, some of people, you know, even say, when I was speaking to Abdul Kalam, because he's dead no more, so nobody cares about it. So they can say this, you know, I'm not just making funny, funny out of them, but then this is the truth nowadays. But when you say this, you will not get the right attraction out of your presentation because people got to know more about it. So think different, make some different information. There are people even got jealous about Abdul Kalam, saying, you guys know only about Abdul Kalam. You know, there are people that they just do this. So get out of this, you know, finalize somebody who really make worth of it. There are crows of people that you can analyze who have succeeded and not been prominent or, you know, uh, well prominent among the society. So get the social proof out of it to manipulate your thought that coincide with the factors what you believe. So that makes value to your presentation. Then, uh, the next important factor is linking information. The linkers play a vital role. So, when we go with, usually when we go with this group discussion, you will find people, either they talk about the same information what everybody knows. If, for example, we give a topic, social media, right? They speak, uh, social media is something which is, uh, their, you know, regular uh, lifestyle that we use to communicate with our friends. That's what everybody knows. What's the use of you saying that? So something different that is acceptable, which is not ordinary, which everybody knows, that links your information. Chase for something new. Just don't go with the same no information. Right? Which is, which can be of anything. Just think what you really admire to listen to. Because that is how you represent those for others to let it admire. So this is a psychological truth. The way you like it would enthrall your representation and that recognize the way that you take it. And people understand the way you got through. So, this is how you need to proclaim the fact with the help of linkers. And the final and the last important point is your authority. Never give up your authority. Our language must be commanding. Words that we deliver should be careful, diplomatic, and commanding. So, to first to get started with this, how do you represent the usage of phrases? Never repeat the phrases often. Try to use different uh, vocabulary so as you can find your participants refreshing always. You can get across with them. And show your authority. Authority is nothing but it sounds in your voice. How commanding it is. What matters. So it completely relies on your trust that you talk about the way that you understand or the way that you are confident about what you talk about get reflect in the authority of it. So this is up the structure that has to be. So to make you find easy, like when it comes to introduction, we start with the name, where we come from, your family information, like how many of you are there in your family, and your education, like your school and your college, and about your professional information, your strength, your hobbies, your interest towards the job, and your long-term aspiration about the job. Finally, don't end up with this just like that, because that's the question what is being asked to you. Tell me about yourself or introducing yourself. 
always go with, there is a starter for any presentation. Like, uh, it's been really glad for me to, I feel really glad to introduce myself to you. Or it's been a great pleasure for me to, I feel really honored towards representing my information with you. Thank you for your time. All this is something very, very necessary to acknowledge because you got to be user friendly. Though you are, you know, authenticating or show your command, your attitude must be user friendly. How do we do it? Just by smiling. Just have a smile. So you get a bit more closer. So any any minute when you just walk in, when you're leading a team, you first get nervous that nobody can say that I go out of nervousness. Everybody get this nervousness. When you start a presentation before somebody or with your high officials. Everybody get this nervousness. How do you get rid of it? There is no mantra or there is no something that you need to say. All you need to smile before people. You get the smile back. So what happens this smile, when you get the smile back, your, your, your heart will get relaxed. Okay, I'm on a right moment. And just don't jump into the information immediately. What I'm going to, the plan for the day is this, and what I'm going to do is, just don't do it, go with the question. What do you think about this topic? What do you think the purpose of the session to be today? Get the representation, get the acknowledgement out of your presentation, I mean the listeners. Because this gives the right rapport when you just go meet a group of people. So this must be there initially before you start your representation. And the structure, when you end up with it, just don't say that's all about it and that's all for the day. Ask question when you complete it.